Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of CCK Live. Today, we're going to be talking about VA benefits that all disabled veterans qualify for. Um, so I think a lot of people will know <clears throat> that, you know, when you are service connected and you get a particular rating, you're going to get a certain amount of um, money per month. But we want to cover some of the topics that maybe people don't know as much about other benefits that are there uh, on the table for you to take advantage of that you should take advantage of if you need them and if you want them. Um, so before we get jump, jump into the substance of this, my name is Christian McCarnigan. Today I am joined with uh, joined by Elise Phillips and Lindy Nash. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that we're going to keep talking about in this segment is more detail that we have on our blogs and on our website because um, there are a lot of rules to these. We're going to go over most of them, um, but you know the most detail um, that you're going to find are on those other postings um, that are available to you. So, um, and then just one quick caveat: we have a whole other um, CCK live on what other benefits are available for veterans who are rated at 100%. Um, today, we're going to focus on benefits that are available to veterans when they're just service connected, really, even at a non compensable rating. So let's jump right in. Um, Lindy, why don't you talk a little bit about VA healthcare? Sure. So, VA healthcare, uh, first of all, just to give you a little bit of background information, um, the Veterans Health Administration, otherwise known as the VHA, is the largest integrated healthcare system in the United States. So, it's really massive. Um, it provides care at over 1,200 healthcare facilities and helps over 9 million veterans. So it's really expansive and um, there's many different facilities across the country. Um, one of the great things about these healthcare centers is that they employ people called patient advocates. And sometimes uh, I tell my clients, if you have any questions about your healthcare or whether, you know, one of the things we're gonna talk about today are hearing aids or vision disability benefits or um, dental care. If you have questions about that, the patient advocate is a really great person to go to um, at the medical center. They're highly trained professionals who can help uh, with any concerns you have regarding healthcare and can answer any questions for you uh, regarding those specific things, excuse me, those specific things. So that's one thing to point out. Um, but the big question here that you're probably asking is, um, am I eligible for VA healthcare? What allows me uh, to take part in this healthcare system? Um, so one of the key factors is your discharge. Uh, if you did not receive a dishonorable discharge, and you have some sort of disability rating, whether it's 0% or 50, you know, it doesn't matter. As long as you have some sort of rating, um, you can likely qualify for VA healthcare. And even if you aren't rated for anything, um, you should still get in touch with them because you still might be qualified uh, depending on some other factors. Um, but that big kind of first initial thing should be looking at your discharge. Um, and as long as you did not receive a dishonorable discharge, you should be eligible. But there are some other kind of smaller requirements to look into as well. So if you enlisted after September 7th, 1980, or you entered active duty after October 16th, 1981, there is a continuous uh, service requirement. So you must have served 24 continuous months or the full period for which you were called to active duty. So there is that one kind of time period requirement. However, just to make things extra complicated, <laughs> you don't always need to hit that continuous uh, monthly requirement if you... First of all, we're discharged for a disability that was caused or made worse by your service. You were discharged for a hardship or early out, or you served prior to, uh, excuse me, to September 7th, 1980. So if you have any of those uh, situations, you don't need to hit that continuous uh, monthly, that 24 month re requirement. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of general background. Should I get into the priority groups, Christian? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Maybe just a quick overview, because if I were a veteran and I was assigned a priority group, I probably wouldn't know what that meant. So maybe to give people some context or at least where to start about understanding that. Definitely. So um, it's important when we're talking about VA healthcare to explain the priority groups. So VA assigns each veteran a priority group when they apply for healthcare. Uh, it would be a number system. It's one out of eight. So you would be assigned either number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight, and that would be your priority group. Um, this system helps to make sure that veterans who are really in immediate need and have a serious um, you know, disability going on or really need that immediate care are seen quickly uh, and efficiently. 
So the priority group that um, you are assigned may affect how soon you're signed up for benefits and also how much, if anything, you'll have to pay toward the cost of care. What you said one through eight, right? Yes. And so although one is the lowest number, yes. that's the highest priority group, correct? Yes. Yep. If you're given a priority group one assignment, that would mean you are in the most immediate need for care and you should be treated uh, first, you know, before someone who is in priority group uh, six or seven. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, Lindy. Anything to add before we move on to Elise and vision benefits? I was just going to mention that, um, again, you should really check out our blog, um, cck-law.com, because we have some awesome graphics uh, that lay out what each priority group means, how you fall into each group, um, and they're just really helpful. I'm a visual person, and I really uh, it helped me understand the priority groups just by looking at these really great graphics that we have uh, to explain what the groups really mean. Um, so I would suggest going there um, and checking it out. All right, so we just went over healthcare in a lease. Uh, a lot of veterans who qualify for VA health care also can get a portion or all of their vision care through the VA, right? Correct. So, um, as you just said, uh, basically everything that Lindy just covered, um, if you qualify for those things, you're most likely um, going to be able to qualify for some type of vision benefits, whether it's, you know, complete coverage or just partial. Um, that's going to depend on your, your circumstances. But what vision benefits really means and what that covers is going to be your routine eye exams. Um, so when you go to the eye doctor and they test your vision, um, but also preventative testing, such as a glaucoma test. Um, whether eyeglasses are covered is, a, is slightly different than just an exam. Um, so eyeglasses are covered for uh, veterans that have compensable readings. Um, but veterans that don't have compensable readings can still get coverage for eye classes if they fit into certain uh, categories. There's a lot of categories and we have them all listed on our blog. So I'm not going to go through them all just because there are a lot, but I will give you guys some examples. Um, for example, if you're a former prisoner of war, um, if you are awarded a Purple Heart, if you are receiving benefits under um, 38 uh, U.S. Code 1151, um, or if you have received increased pension based on being permanently house uh, bound or in need of regular aid and attendance. Those are all examples of ways somebody might be qualified to have their eyeglasses covered um, if they don't have a compensable rating. Like I said, if you have a compensable rating or 10% or above, you're going to get um, those glasses covered. So if you have a zero, but you were awarded a Purple Heart, I'm not exactly sure how that would work, but I'm assuming it's certainly possible it's unlikely, um, then your eyeglasses are going to be covered. But if you have a 10, your eyeglasses are covered, right? Great. And so unfortunately, another uh, disability that we see very frequently in our practice um, are, you know, audiological disabilities, hearing disabilities. Um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of these hearing disabilities happen for a variety of reasons, but most it's, uh, at least that I've seen in my practice, is going to be exposure to noise. Um, so certain veterans qualify for hearing aids that are paid by VA. And again, you're going to have to bear with us. We are listing and making a lot of lists here, but, um, we just want you to be aware of the information so you can know basically whether or not you qualify and then dig into it a little bit more and contact VA about it. So, um, again, veterans with any compensable service connected disability, um, so that's a, a 10 or more wouldn't be, um, a zero or non-compensable, um, and a lot of the qualifications are mostly the same as vision benefits, so I'm not going to get into all of the specifics. Um, and then there are a lot of ways that you can potentially qualify for hearing aids, and I'm not going to bore you with an exhaustive list. So we highly recommend um, that you check out VA's website for more information. But, so there's always a little bit of a but in VA, if the hearing aids are recommended um, by the audio, uh, audio, audiology and speech pathology clinic. That was easy for me to say. Um, the hearing aids themselves, the repairs, future batteries will be at no cost to you as long as you maintain your eligibility. Um, so that's an important thing to, to recognize. And you can request new batteries um, via the mail, over the phone, or uh, via your the e-benefits page. Um, so in order to get hearing aids through VA, you're going to have to um, register at the health administration enrollment section of um, a VA medical center. And so you can do that in person. 
Um, you can do it by filling out form 10-10EZ. There's always a form. We're still in VA uh, again. Um, and then by, or by mailing that form directly to the medical centers of your choice. And so those are a couple of the ways that you can be entitled to get hearing aids to help with your hearing loss from VA. All right, so we've done healthcare, we've done vision, um, we have done hearing aids, and there's sort of like one big um, subsection in terms of health benefits that are sort of left. Linda, you want to talk to us a little bit about dental care? Yeah, definitely. So this is a question we get all the time from our clients um, seeking dental care with the VA and whether or not they qualify. Um, unfortunately, qualifying for dental care uh, can be difficult. The requirements are pretty strict and sometimes tough to achieve. Um, I won't go through all of them, but for example, you may need to have a service-connected dental disability or condition uh, or be a former prisoner of war to qualify for any needed dental care. And there are some other um, requirements as well, but those are kind of just to give you an example of how difficult it is to get uh, dental care. But we wanted to bring to your attention that there's an alternative insurance option available to veterans with any disability rating. You don't need to be rated at 100%. Um, you can have a 0% rating and still qualify for this alternative insurance option. Uh, you just need to be enrolled in VA healthcare or your dependents need to be in CHAMP VA. Uh, the alternative option to VA dental care is called the VA Dental Insurance Program. So V-A-D-I-P, VA DIP. <laughs> um, but basically, VA DIP uh, is a program that offers discounted private dental insurance for veterans and your family members who meet certain requirements. Uh, it's much more accessible. Again, you don't need to have a service-connected dental condition. You don't need to be a former prisoner of war. You don't need to have a 100% rating. Uh, there are no requirements like that. Uh, it's much more accessible, and it's a standard VA dental benefits plan, uh, which you know it's just easier to achieve. So I sort of think about that like a private company's allowing you to buy dental insurance through their policy, right? You pay a little bit and it helps you get, <clears throat> excuse me, discounted treatments and maybe some money towards um, any of those more serious uh, teeth problems. Yeah, yep, exactly. So a, a VA DIP or VA DIP plan uh, covers many common dental procedures such as diagnostic services, um, preventative care, root canals, dental surgery, any emergency dental care, uh, which is really fantastic. So uh, don't give up hope just yet with dental care. If you don't hit those uh, certain requirements, you should definitely check out this other insurance provider. All right, great. And so um, another benefit that uh, is afforded to veterans um, can be life insurance. So we're sort of moving away from sort of what you standard, standard think about healthcare, taking care of your body. Um, so at least you want to talk about life insurance a little bit? Yeah. So there's a certain, um, life insurance plan that's called the service disabled veterans life insurance, um, or SDVI, uh, which is basically a low cost life insurance that's eligible to veterans. Um, in order to qualify, you need to, um, have been released from active duty on or after April 25th, 1951, um, and have not been, uh, or have not been discharged dishonorably. Um, so any discharge other than dishonorable will qualify you. Um, you need to have at least one service-connected disability. It does not need to be compensable. So what that means is it can be a 0% uh, percent combined rating, um, and you can still qualify for this plan. Uh, when you uh, do uh, you know, pick up this life insurance plan, you need to be in good health except for any service-connected conditions. So you might not be in good health because of service-connected conditions, but so long as there's not something that's not service-connected that would qualify you as not in good health, which um, that, that seems like it might be a little bit of a, a vague term, but um, so long as you don't have something maybe like cancer that's not service-connected, you can qualify uh, for this, this life insurance plan. And, and, if the cancer is service connected again, you can also still qualify. Uh, you also need to apply within two years of the date which you're granted your new service connected disability. So that's important to keep in mind. If you do want to pick up this plan um, and you get a new service connected disability, you do have a time a deadline attached to that. Great. Thanks, Elise. And then um, VA, I think, is also known for this, but there are burial benefits that are available to, um, to veterans. 
uh, specifically for veterans who did not receive a dishonorable discharge. Um, if that's the case, you can qualify for um, a grave site at one of VA's um, national cemeteries with available space, um, opening and closing of the grave. And so this is all very specific, um, but just sort of just to give you the a sense of how, what costs of the funeral and the burial VA will um, uh, pay for. It's also outlined on VA's burial uh, benefits website very clearly, um, burial liner, headstone or mark, marker, um, ongoing care of the grave. These are all things that VA uh, would pay for. Um, it's also possible to be reimbursed for some of the funeral expenses um, for burial costs with the veterans with a disability rating if certain other requirements are met. Again, um, we're trying to avoid lists on lists on lists here. So going to the VA's website um, would be the best way to find out what those exact requirements are. Um, and the amount eligible uh, for reimbursement really depends on um, the veteran situation and the unfortunate cause of death. Um, and, you know, some burial expenses are reimbursed um, for a veteran whose death wasn't caused by service, a higher amount if the veteran was hospitalized at the time of death, and highest amount if the veteran's death was unfortunately due to service-connected conditions. And again, we just point you to VA's website for the specific specific dollar amounts and other eligibility requirements. But we just want you to be aware that that's out there um, and something that you can take advantage of if you want. And so as we typically do um, on CCK Live before we're wrapping up, are there any closing thoughts um, that you, Elise or Lindy, would like to add before we wrap up here today? Um, I, I think that this is an important topic because a lot of times in veterans law, we are so focused on that compensable rating and getting a higher rating. But um, this is a reminder that even if you don't have a compensable rating, you still are entitled to benefits through the VA. Um, they're not necessarily super easy to understand. So we obviously encourage you to, to look into your specific situation, but um, it's not only, only about being that compensable rating. Sometimes there's other things that can attach to being service connected. And I would just say that, um, as you may have picked up on, a lot of these different areas uh, and benefits do require you to have uh, not received a dishonorable discharge. So if you did receive a dishonorable discharge, there are ways um, to fight that. And if you look at VA's website, they have uh, resources for you there. So if you think that that discharge was incorrect or there's something in error there, um, I would encourage you to try to get that fixed so that you are able to get one of these uh, benefits for you. And then the one other thing is that I mentioned it in the beginning, but definitely utilize the patient advocate at uh, the VA medical centers. They can be really helpful if you have questions about your hearing aids or dental care or vision or whether you even are eligible. Uh, they're a really great resource for you. So I would suggest that you reach out to them for more information. Yeah, and I'll just close by saying, in addition to these benefits from VA, there are also a lot of state benefits benefits, excuse me, that are available to veterans. So check out, um, lots of states have veteran benefits specific websites um, within their state website. So definitely check those out and see if there's anything else available to you. So thank you very much, Elise and Lindy, and thank you for joining us. That's it for us today.